Welcome to South Korea. Today we are staying in a traditional house. It's actually been turned into a hotel of sorts. The house itself has four rooms. The four rooms are like four separate accommodations that people can book. But for today, I'm the only one here. So I figured I'd give you the full tour and show you what the like traditional Korean houses kind of look like. So this is the entrance. You leave your shoes outside before you come in and then you put the slippers on. Traditionally, this part would actually be open. You can kind of see up here. So this is the traditional roof and normally this would be the entrance to the house. But because of like the weather and the snow and stuff and this is like paper here, like because of that, the weather would really deteriorate the house and the wood and stuff. So the owner has sort of renovated it so that he's out of this part and the door and the glass. So that is new and this little extension is new, but the rest of the house is pretty authentic. We're in the hallway now. This would have been the old entrance. There's like a second hallway and there's a step up. So traditionally you would have stepped up into here and left your shoes actually here. A bit dark at the moment, but this is one of the rooms. It's got like a divided down the middle. So this is where two people would stay. And then there's a bathroom back there. The beds are a mattress on the floor. Traditionally people in Korea slept on the floor. This is my little area of the house. This is where I ate breakfast this morning. This is the bathroom. It's like a wet room. So this is the shower. And like the whole room is sort of designed to get wet, the toilet and the sink. There's also separate slippers. So you take your slippers off and you put the different slippers on for the bathroom. That's also pretty common in other places in Korea as well. And it's common in other places like Japan. Then this is my room. This is my bed. This is interesting. This little box here is actually for heating the bed. So this little box heats water and then it circulates the water throughout the bottom of the mattress, which is why the partially why the mattresses are so thick so that it's heated because it gets really cold here. It was only four degrees this morning and it's not even winter. So a thing in a lot of Korean housing is that the floors actually are all heated. And that was the case in like a few other places that I've stayed here as well. So next room, this one has such a low ceiling, like, I am only five foot tall and even I have to be worried about the height of the ceiling. This is a little tea room set up for making tea. Tea, teapot. You would put the tea in here and then you would pour it out into here and then you use that to finally serve. That is what's been explained to me. I believe as well that put the boiling water in and then pretty quickly you serve the tea and then it'll kind of steep more over time. So like it gets more and more flavor over time. Correct me if I'm wrong. Owners actually make all this stuff. So they make all the, all the cloths, all the bedding, all the tea. So that's really cool. In here, there's like a library. All of it's in Korean. <laughs> So not gonna be much good for me, but the owner here actually speaks English. He's really nice. He's been giving me lots of suggestions. Then this is another room of the house and there's this little cute seating area here, nice and in the sun. There's also a nice like deck area outside that you can kind of overlook the city, which I'll show you later, but it was way too cold this morning to eat out there. So I've been eating in here. In here, another bedroom in normal traditional Korean houses. The bathrooms are always outside, which makes sense. That's the case for a lot of um, traditional housing because bathrooms used to be pretty gross, <laughs> but they've built bathrooms inside for this, which I'm thankful for. And it also has a pretty modern kitchen. So there's like a full fridge, full kitchen. That's most of the place. It's like I said that four bedrooms, but technically five, there's actually like a little single attic bed that you can rent as well but the door is locked to go up there I, I would show you where i'm saying right now is kyonju and kyonju is about an hour bus half an hour train away from busan's kyonju was the capital city of south korea for a, over a thousand years i believe so longer than seoul has been the capital city and it has this big historical walking area. So you can see this old ornate bridge. You can see all the tombs for the emperors. You can see where the castle 
used to be and the ruins of the castle. There's a lot of history here and also there's sort of this building mandate so there's no really big buildings or anything and there's a lot of old historic houses like this one. You can just feel the history everywhere you go. There's something interesting to do even at night. It's beautiful and lit up and illuminated and yeah that's the traditional Korean housing. This place was a little bit expensive to stay in but you wouldn't normally stay here by yourself like I'm staying in a double room and you would normally share a double room with someone else. One of my favorite things about traveling is learning about the history and the culture of places and seeing this kind of place it really shows you the differences right but also the similarities you know the idea of like bathrooms being outside is pretty common for most history I would say but this idea of the shoes on and the shoes off and the futons on the floor and the paper walls and the paper architecture it's also unique to Asia and it's so interesting to see something so different and it's the same with walking around this town and seeing such a different history. It's really just highlight of traveling for me. I would always recommend that when you go somewhere you make time to explore these kind of things even if museums are not your vibe. You don't have to go to a museum, you can stay somewhere like this. I'll link this place down below. I definitely recommend it. The host, like I said, he speaks English and he's very nice. Yeah, this is just a short little tour video because I wanted to share this place with you. If you're interested in my journeys, make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more like this. And thanks so much for watching. Bye!